Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem balanced binary tree. We're given a binary tree and we want to determine if it is height balanced. What exactly do they mean by height balanced? Well, it's defined by saying that for every single node in the tree, if we take the left and right subtrees, of this node, the heights of these left and right subtrees will differ by at most one. So in here, you can see taking a look at the root node, uh, it has a left subtree. What's the height of this left subtree? Let's call it one, right? Because there's one node in the left subtree. What about the right subtree? How many, what's the height of this right subtree? Well, it's two, right? We can determine that just by looking at it. So then the left subtree has a height of one, the right subtree has a height of two. The difference is uh, at most one, right? Because if we take the absolute value of the difference, we get one. So we'll say the uh, difference is one. So we just did that for the root node, but we have to do that for every single node to make sure that the left and right subtrees of every single node differ by at most one. And just to show you a counter example, so this is kind of a badly drawn tree, but take a look at the root node, right? If we take a look at the left tree over here, the height is three. If we take a look at the right subtree, the height is three. So the difference is zero, which fits into our criteria. So from the root node, the left subtree and the right subtree are balanced. But if we take a look at, let's say this node, right? We take a look at its left subtree, which is empty, right? So that has a height of zero. The right subtree has a height of two. So in that case, the difference is two minus zero, which is two, right? positive two, which is greater than one. So just because uh, from here, taking a look at the root node, the left and right subtrees are balanced, doesn't mean that that's gonna be true for every single node because we just looked at this node, the left and right subtrees were not balanced. How can we solve this efficiently? Let me first show you kind of an, a naive approach and then we'll see how we can actually optimize that. So if we were asking naively, right, the first question we're asking is from the root node are the left and right subtrees balanced? How do we even determine that? Well, do you agree that we could probably do a recursive DFS on the left subtree to determine the height of the left subtree, do a recursive DFS on the right subtree to determine the height of this subtree, and then we could compare those and make sure that the difference is less than or equal to one. Do you agree that we could do that? Probably, right? I'll explain more details in the code, but for now, let's just assume we can do that. We start from the root, we run a DFS on the left and on the right. That means we go through every single node in the tree. So we just did an O of N operation, right? And we were able to determine, okay, from the root node, yes, it is balanced, but we're not done yet, right? We Now we have to continue to ask that question for every single node, right? So the next question we're gonna ask is suppose on the left subtree, right? From the left subtree, are the left and right subtrees from this node also balanced? And of course they're both zero, so we determine that they are. And then we'll have to recursively go to the right subtree. From here, we're gonna ask, are the left and right subtrees balanced? Yes, they are, but we'll recursively have to continue. We'll have to do that from this node, and then we'll have to do that from this node. Since we're running a recursive DFS on every single subtree, on this uh, root tree, we're gonna have to do basically an O of N operation each time we ask that question. Is it balanced from here? Is it balanced from here? Is it balanced from here? And we can have a really big tree and we'd have to do an O of N operation each time. O of N is the number of nodes in the tree. And if we have to do this N operation, N times, we're gonna get a time complexity of O of N squared. So now the question is, can we do better than that? Is there any repeated work? And I'll show you that, that yes, there is repeated work and it basically can be eliminated by asking the question in a different order. What I mean by that is instead of first asking if the entire tree is balanced from the root node, right? That's the first question we ask. Is it balanced starting from here? Instead of asking that, we uh, do this bottom up. We start, we recursively, instead of asking it from here, we're gonna check, okay, is this entire right subtree balanced? Before we do that, we're gonna ask, is this entire subtree balanced? And we're gonna keep going lower and lower until we get to the base case. Once we get to the base case, then we're gonna go back up and I'll show you how that's actually gonna end up eliminating the repeated work. If we do it in this order, we'll only have to visit each node at most one time, which will ensure the overall time complexity is gonna be big O of N rather than N squared. Okay, so when we get to the root, before we check if it's balanced from here, we're gonna check if it's balanced from this right subtree. 
that makes sense so far. And then before we ask from this position, we're gonna ask is it bounced from this leaf node, right? And now we can't really go any lower because this node doesn't actually have any children. So of course its subtrees are going to be balanced, but now we're good, right? We, we determine, okay, this for, from this node, yes, the left and right subtrees are balanced, right? And then we pop back up suppose and then uh, we we also want to make sure that this uh, node is also balanced it's the same thing right the left and right childs don't exist so yeah it's balanced from here as well so we determined that right now we know from at least these two nodes yes the left and right subtrees are balanced from these two nodes okay now we want to know is it balanced from this node how can we determine that aren't we gonna have to go back down and revisit the entire right subtree and the entire left subtree again no and I'll show you why as as we are determining if this subtree is balanced, let's also at the same time, simultaneously, let's make sure we get the height of this tree, the entire height of this subtree. And let's do the exact same thing for this node, make sure we get the entire height of this subtree, because once we've done that, then once we go back up to the parent node from here, it will be easy. We already have the height of this tree. We already have the height of this tree. We can take the difference between those, make sure it's less than or equal to one and then we're good we we didn't even have to revisit these trees right from this node now we've already determined yes it's also balanced from this position right so now we've determined it's balanced from this node, balanced from here, and balanced from here. And now we wanna go back up to the root node and make sure it's balanced from here. Before we do that, we have to solve the sub problem on this left subtree. It's just a base case problem, right? It's just a single node. So we know it's balanced from here as well. So now we wanna go back up to the root node. Is it balanced from this root node? Well, as we are doing this, right? As we were doing this right subtree, we determined that the height of this tree was one, the height of this tree was also one, right? So now we wanna know before, from, from this node over here, before we return back up to the parent, we wanna know what's the entire height of this subtree. How can we easily determine that? Well, we know that this was one, this was also one. So from here, the height is just gonna be one, meaning one. this one comes from this node over here, plus the max of its left and right subtrees, which we know are both one. So we can take the max of one and one, that's gonna end up being one. So the height of the overall tree is just gonna be one plus one, which is two, right? So the height of this tree is gonna be two. We determined that pretty easily. And we, that's what we can return back up to this parent node, which is good for us, right? And from this tree on the left, the height is one because it's just a single node. So we return that up to the parent as well. So now from here, we know that the height of the left left subtree is one, the height of the right subtree is two. We can take that difference, two minus one, it's one, which is less than or equal to uh, one. So that we do know that this is balanced from this node as well, right? And we can continue to recursively do that. If we had another parent node up above us somewhere, we could return, okay, the height of this overall tree is gonna be three, right? So that's the main logic we're gonna follow. Yes, we're gonna do this recursively and there's many ways to code this up. The main way I'm gonna code this up is actually by returning two values. I'm gonna return a Boolean as the first value, which will be either true or false. Basically for every single subtree, remember we are gonna determine is that subtree balanced? We'll return a true or false for that. And the second value will be the height of that subtree. So from this subtree, what we would return is true because it is balanced and the height we would return is two, right? The height of this subtree is two. So this is kind of what we would return. Now, if we ever from any single subtree, if we ever return false, that means we found at least one subtree that's not balanced. If we find even one subtree that's not balanced, that means from the root, we're going to end up having to uh, return false, which I'll show you how we can implement that in the code. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. So now let's get into the code and Main thing is we're gonna do this recursively. Why can't I just use this outer function to do it? Because this outer function just returns a single value, right, the Boolean, but we actually wanna implement this by returning two values. So I'm gonna write a nested recursive function here and we're gonna pass in a single parameter, which is the root. And remember this function is gonna return a pair of values, a Boolean and the height of the tree. So first things first, the base case. If the root is uh, null, right, this 
means that we have an empty tree. So is an empty tree considered balanced? Yeah, let's say it is. So for the first value, we'll return true in this case. And the second value, which is the height of the tree, an empty tree we can assume just has a height of zero, let's say. And now remember, before we determine from this root node, is this tree balanced? First, we want to determine if from the left subtree it is balanced and from the right subtree is it balanced. So let's call DFS recursively on the right and left subtrees and then assign it to the result variables left and right. So uh, that's what we're doing with the single line of code, calling DFS on both subtrees. So now we want to know from the root node, is it balanced, right? How can we determine that? Well, we're gonna have to take the absolute value of the left and right heights, right? So how can we do that? We can take absolute value left of index one, because remember the second value is where the height happens to be, left of one minus right of one. So this will give us that. So as long as this is less than or equal to one, we can say that the tree is balanced, right? Uh, not, not so fast because remember, if either of these left or right subtrees ever returned false in the first parameter, then we know for sure that the entire tree is not balanced, right? So before we say uh, that this condition is enough, we're gonna add two more conditions. We're gonna say, okay, as long as this is true, meaning that from the root it's balanced and the left and right subtrees were also balanced. So we can determine that by just taking the uh, first, the, the zero index of left and the zero index of right and also this condition over here. Let me just reformat it slightly to make it a little bit more readable. This balance is what we're gonna be returning as the first, uh, as the zeroth index. Let me just show you that. So we're gonna return a pair of values. The first is gonna be, is this tree balanced? And the second is gonna be the height of the tree. How do we determine the height of the tree? Well, it's gonna be one. Uh, one comes from the root node that we're currently at, plus the max of the left and right subtree. So we can get that pretty easily left at index one uh, and right at index one. So whatever the max of those two is plus one gives us the height. Hopefully this is pretty simple, but the balanced might not be. This balance doesn't only mean is the, is the tree balanced from the root position. This balanced means is the entire tree balanced at all? Because remember if the left subtree, for example, was not balanced, then this uh, conditional is going to evaluate to false, right? Because this balance is only going to be true if the left subtree was balanced and the right subtree was balanced, and from the root subtree, are we balanced, right? So all three of those have to be true for us to return true as the balanced variable. Hopefully that makes sense because that is the entire code. Once we're done with that, we can, in the outer function, we can go ahead and call our DFS starting from the root node. And remember this DFS is gonna return two variable or, or a pair of values, right? a Boolean and the height. So which of those do we want to return in the outer function? We want to return the Boolean so we can return this at index zero, and then that'll be the entire code. So let me submit it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, it does work and it's pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.